Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to LCK Summit 2020. I'm Atlas, joined by Valdez, the Valdanalyst, for Gen G versus T1. This is a big one. Of course, uh, the last time Gen G played, it was against T1, and it was a loss, one of their only two losses that they had uh, for the, the first round Robin. They lost yep. to Dragon Axe as well, but that was the only other one. And so Gen G wanting to right the ship here with a win over T1, whereas T1s have been, like, their matches have been crazy and uh, not necessarily yeah. inspiring. No, yeah, crazy in good ways and bad ways. Yeah. Um, T1 somehow very inconsistent here in summer, I feel, even though it's very obvious that there are a lot of parts of their team that are still very strong. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, very strong players. They have great team fighting still, but I, I feel like some of the players are falling back a little bit. And Denzi is looking strong in recent times, but Outside of that one loss against T1, they have kind of crushed all the lower yeah. part of the LCK, and now they're going to have to start playing the stronger teams again, which is where they have struggled a little bit here in summer. And I'm expecting this should be pretty even. If I had to give a slight edge, I'd say maybe Gen G, but I, I would be happy to be proven wrong either way. Yeah, I think so too. I think uh, going over the points of the match here, the Spring Finals rematch, but I think it's the round one rematch that we really need to talk about because it was a 2-0 by T1. This, it was probably their most substantial win that they managed to pick up in recent memory as well. And you're right. I mean, Genji went up against, what, Dynamics, Humble Life, and Afrika Freaks. And we've seen all three of those teams really struggling uh, in their recent matches. So this is a big test for Genji, and we'll see whether that mental block is still there. Like, they just don't seem to be able to get it together against this team. Yeah, which uh, is really important when it comes playoff time because, you know, even in finals they lose to them. Yeah. It's it's always going to be a team that will stand in their way. So if they can't beat T1, I mean, are we ever going to see Gen G uh, achieve any greatness? We will have to see how that story does pan out. We are highlighting Kana a little bit there in the third point of the match. He is the T1's new carry role. Can he be the Godna? today. I mean, he's pretty good. I, I feel like there is still a little bit of that kind of rookie inconsistency in him, although he is slowly getting better and better with that. And uh, we also do have Legolas in League. It's Ruler. <laughs> yep. Seven and zero on Ash. He's definitely the biggest Ash player right now, which oh means it's not God. very safe to play Aphelios into this team. Nope. Uh, we, we're going back all the way to 2018 for Gen G's last victory in a best of series against T1. That's ludicrous. Yeah. That's uh that is absolutely a monopoly that T1's had for 2 years now and Gen G were only able to pip them at the post. That's what stopped T1 from being able to make it to Worlds if you remember in 2018. Gen G are the ones that uh put them down. Mhm. Mm and uh, that was of course the year where KT was our only hope and they got knocked out by IG who then became the champions for 2018. Having a look at some of the stats here, uh, looking a little bit better on the side of Gen G, as you can see all of our highlights. But uh, KDA is absolutely the same. But uh, champion kills per minute still woeful for T1. They've had a very, very slow style as Team DPM, very similar for both of these teams. And at least both are still staying ahead of the curve when it comes to how they're performing around the 15 minute mark. But I mean, Coach Kim has been outspoken saying that they don't feel like they're in very good form at the moment. That's a, There's a reason why they've been playing much slower League of Legends, and that is because they need to slow it down because they don't feel like they're up to snuff here in the LCK. So definitely some very honest answers coming out of Coach Kim, but what they're doing to actually remedy all of their issues is uh, yet to really come to light. Cuz is going to be starting here. Um, no other real surprises when it comes to the T1 uh, champion uh, players. But uh, Kuz has had some up and down performances, to say the least. <laughs> so uh, let's you see how he's going to go. As uh, <laughs> over the side of Gen G, we'll see whether it's brother Clid for T1 or whether Clid is going to continue. Uh, his dominance that he's had for Gen G, I've actually yeah. really enjoyed a lot of his performances. Gen G is, it, they are very strong right now. As you mentioned, I, I do think it is kind of a mental block against T1 because up against every other team, even Dom one, I mean, they were able to defeat. BDD right now is on top of the player of the game. Statistics with eight, yep, the most in the entire league. But the key players of this matchup that they will highlight will be the top laners as Kana has been performing very well. 
as has been Rascal kind of quietly, you know, because everybody on Gen G is performing very well right now in their own respect, and Rascal is kind of just quietly doing his job and getting some really high numbers and doing quite well. You even see for isolated deaths, it's better to have a lower score because yeah. then you die alone less. And Kana's got the LCK first solo kills. That's pretty good. Not bad at all. I think Rascal has been sort of slowly but surely uh, increasing his performance level. I think the top laners here in the LCK have been falling off quite a lot. But we are going to highlight the bottom lane as well. And uh, Teddy up against aiming didn't look like great stats, but as you can see here against uh, Ruler, it's a similar story. Goal per minute still fantastic. Teddy still has some of the best farming stats in the world at the moment. I think he does average over 11 CS per minute, which is extraordinarily good. Yeah. As does Ruler, yeah. sitting right behind him at second by only 0.3 gold per minute less, which I don't even know. Like That's that nutty. is such, It's basically the same exact number. But the CS is it. much higher for Ruler, showing that he really yeah. does dominate the lane early. Early domination has not been a thing T1 has been doing at all throughout uh, Summer yeah. Split. It so helps when you're playing a lot of Ash too, because yeah. you usually dominate your lane and get ahead early. So. It makes sense for Ruler. He's also doing a, a nice amount of damage, and this should be a very fun and fiery matchup. I hope it's fiery. I hope we get a lot of action here, at least, on the Rift. This one player on the side of T1 has been met with a lot of criticism recently. Absolutely. Even in some of their wins, people have been scratching their head at his play. I know LS was pretty vocal about it in their last series up against KT, and He's going to be starting here. So they say they will go with the kind of the veteran going into the first match, at least up against Gen G. Perhaps if he has a poor performance, we will see LM. But LM still is a little bit green, especially compared to Kuz, who has been on many big stages. We're just hoping that he can perform and do a decent job for his team. Yep. Of course, Kaz debuting a very long time ago, I believe in 2017, after dominating solo queue for a very long time. But yeah, certainly has uh, seen some better days here in his performances that he's had at the moment. But you look at the names on Gen G, there's just not many that haven't been performing. I mean, the only one that doesn't really stand out to me over their recent matches is Life. And Life has had some pretty good games. Yeah. There he is on your screen right there. And we'll see, uh, Rule has kind of been stealing his limelight away from him. But uh, T1, right, like you say, because struggling, Kana definitely overperforming. So this might be a time where he can shine, but our Rascal's being one of our better top laners, so it is going to be a difficult task to keep him down. Rascal was able to do it up against Noggery, but wasn't able to uh, secure it against Kana last time. Let's see what happens here in the draft, Valdez. Yeah, and uh, they're gonna take away the Zoe right away. Um, <laughs> we're not gonna be seeing BD playing Zoe, I think, at all for quite a while, yeah. Um, at least against teams that do their research. Uh, we're not going to be seeing Set either. We don't We don't want to have Life playing that, picking that one up. Karma and should be banned. Flexibility, yeah. Karma, Varus, I think are pretty obvious ones that are left over here for Gen G. Although they're going to go what? for Azir. Interesting. Uh, Faker, of course, fantastic Azir player, but it's uh, the most so no. played for BDD at the moment as well. I don't know how many losses he's suffered, but it can't be too many. As uh, actually has uh, fallen on his ear a couple of times. Stats for T1 looking a little bit better in the uh, Pigeon Man department. As there is Clid's very cleanly sin being taken away, and I'm glad that we can still we can say that once again, right? Like Clid had some pretty woeful performances earlier on in the season, uh, but has since really come back to uh, the powerhouse status that he is. AD carries completely left wide open here. As yeah. Gen G thinking about whether they need to ban the Karma. I think you have to. I I, I don't really want to see it here. It's a hard decision. They're going to ban away Olaf instead. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I just don't even know what to say about that. I mean, I guess... It's a it, throwaway, right? And yeah. you can understand why. Because there is so much power left available. Ezreal first pick. Volibear first pick. Karma first pick. There is like a bajillion different options. And T1, they really like going for Callista uh, straight out the gate. So there are a lot of different things that Gen G can try to deny. As Karma is going to be locked in, you'd assume that that would come in there, but what Gen G get in return, we'll just have to see. 
Volibear, Ezreal, probably the tier list picks. But we know that uh, Ruler does like heading towards the Ash when given the opportunity. Yeah. So they can prioritize something else instead if they want to. The, the Volibear has been seeing kind of average results, even though it has had a ton of presence here. In the LCK, it gets picked very, very often and even banned a lot too. The Ezreal comes in here. Teddy's Ezreal is pretty insane. So maybe Ruler didn't want to just let him have it. His Callista is also really insane. So maybe taking the Ezreal covers both of those bases because you can kind of dance around the Callista and not really get in her range by taking the Ezreal and playing up against it. And Teddy's Callista might just be good enough. Yeah, they're just going to go for it here. Yep. It's uh, not been a priority for uh, Ruler at all, really, the Callista. He's played a couple of games on it, but otherwise hasn't really headed over there, whereas T1 do like to prioritize it over anything else. The mid-game potency. And uh, Trundle being considered now. Not exactly the greatest position for a Trundle pick. Jax. Uh, uh, okay. okay. The old Jax blind. I the, the Jax blind when there is still a lot of powerful picks left available and I mean it's not generally something that gets flexed right it's not something that gets picked early because it's it's generally used as a counter pick which is why you were talking about how it's a blind Jax I mean I, I see this and I'm like is effort gonna play Jax there's no way right like I mean, <laughs> uh, it could be funny. But, yeah, I, I just, like, go off the deep end when I see it this early. But it'll be interesting to see. I mean, maybe Kana's just been practicing it a lot. He played one game of Jax. I don't know if seriously effort would even ever consider it, obviously. But, I mean, Kuz's <laughs> win rate on Jax is actually very high historically. Uh, he's played eight games, 75% win rate on that one so far. So, yeah, you know, I guess. six and two ain't bad. I guess that it should be going into the jungle then. That's actually something I didn't even consider. So thank you for that. We'll have to wait and see, though. I guess it can be flexed as the karma can. We're seeing more bands coming in here. They say, well, it's definitely not support. Tarek's going to be taken out. Silas currently getting very popular once again in the LCK. So they don't want to let that one go through. Currently two wins on Jackson solo queue at the moment for Cuz. So it does uh, lend itself to that being an opportunity at this point in time. Mm -hmm. But can also, like you say, reflex top lane. No worries at all. Yeah. LeBlanc banned away from Faker. Name a more iconic duo as uh, the old Tarek Callista is going to be denied. Silas, what's the answer here? Because it might be... Oh, okay, they're going to ban the cannon. Yeah. Cannon very popular nowadays, too. Um, the AP Cannon and the Dash Cannon, as you so <laughs> nicely mentioned, can be used to great effect. We saw Renekton for just a moment. That was scary. <laughs> I uh, got a little bit spooked <laughs> by that. I'm not going to lie. Now Aurelia being looked at. Certainly an old favorite of Rascals, but instead BDD going to move over to the Orianna to see whether some uh, orbs can be attached to this bear as he d decides to launch himself into these team fights could be an option yeah efforts giving a little smile he's been watching some barrel play and he's like oh maybe i'll consider some pantheon they hovered it oh. but not gonna go for it just yet i mean they could play jack's top lane and then go oh okay never mind it's going to be the old duo this is one that uh gen g really loved which was the old uh rakan Alongside the Callista. Oh no, don't. Please, guys. Come on, this, is, uh, <laughs> this would make the, it blind jacks. I, I don't know if this is serious. Also, Graves is is 6% win rate right now. He's 1 in 15. He did win a game. As, yeah. Uh, okay, this is an Akali. So that's going to be locked away. So it is going to put the jacks in the jungle, but now Akali and Karma can continue to be flexed. So. For blue side drafts, I do really like this. Still holding their cards pretty close to their chest. As now Rascal, still theoretically blind picking, but picking into magic damage. So I guess there are some changes that he can make here. 
Renekton. Uh, may as well just Renekton. <laughs> no, the Nico. Renekton. Okay, no, Nico's coming in. So a lot of AoE lockdown here from Gen G. They can get in there and be a nuisance. Rascal actually mentioned the fact that he hadn't put very much time into Nico whatsoever when he picked it last time. Also didn't win that game. So we'll see whether this is going to be better this time out. Yeah, a very curious draft here. Definitely not much of the norm. Uh, this does mean that Kana will be hopping up onto the Karma top, which again is eight and zero right yeah, now. Yeah, Karma is real good. Yeah, she is enjoying a lot of wins from the top lane. It's super safe. You can't deal with her. She can build so many different builds. She can be flexed everywhere. And the Nico will be up there to attempt to put on a little bit of pressure and, of course, offer some really fun AoE damage in the team fights. But that is also a ton of AP damage on Genji's comp. So we'll have to wait and see how that one does go. Yeah, just a really short range comp coming out of T1 here. They spike super hard in the mid game. <clears throat> as Arden Sense are not exactly going to be giving the Callista too much this time around, but their ability to dive and activate all of that CC is going to be uh, pretty dangerous. However, you look over the side of Gen G, and they do have sort of a lot of counter, you know? You utilize the Pop Blossom if they dive on top of you, get that big shield and get all of that lockdown, and then you can layer a Shockwave over the top of it. Plus, Ruler is gonna be very safe with life alongside him on this Tarm Kench. It's not like the Tarm Kench picks that we saw from Gorilla in our previous series. This one might be a better time for the Catfish on the bottom side of the map, as we'll just have to see whether Genji have dealt with their mental block, and whether they have found a draft that they want. Yeah, I feel like their draft is a little bit more straightforward for sure. Uh, yeah. They actually do have a ball carrier. They could even have a couple, depending on how aggressive Nico can get in these fights. But certainly a lot of protection for three, you know, quote unquote carries uh, for the side of T1, if you consider Jax that too. We'll have to see what kind of build he goes for if he wants to go tanky. The tank Jax jungle was something that we saw brought back by Malrong actually from Jin Air and a bunch of other people tried it. And as you were saying it, Cuz is trying it once again in solo queue and having a bit of success. And we do know that from time to time, players, pro players will use their solo queue kind of experiences to say, well, I'm really confident on this pick right now. Just let me give it a try here yep. in game number one. Even if it's not something we see very often, it's going to go Halo Blades. Going to yep. be attacking real fast. No surprises there, double Halo Blades on the side of T1. Teddy, of course, taking that one as well, as uh, we're checking it out, because with an 85.7% win rate, so my stats are a little bit wrong, six and one. I've got six and two in my record ah. books, but maybe this is just uh, during the LCK regular season. Maybe he did find a loss on the pickup at, uh, I don't know, a Kespa Cup or something like that. Could have certainly been a thing, mm -hmm. missing one of those losses. Faker took a lot of unnecessary damage in the mid lane, but uh, more importantly than that, 15 and two is effort on Rakan. Uh, pretty ridiculous stats. Obviously, effort is a very well-known Rakan player. Knows his stuff. Back in the days when Rakan could just, you know, do that insane engage. Yeah, he was definitely one of the main support players that was abusing that to great effect. Oh, BDD. Throwing this orb around the mid lane will actually have a lot of control in the early stages, which is something that not a lot of Orianas are able to boast. And honestly, if you're able to play this style on the Oriana, she's very oppressive. It's just if she gets shoved in, it's more difficult to deal with. As you can see that Commander of Protect actually doing a lot of work here for BDD, who is controlling this lane entirely. My God, really rough. Of course, you know, it's, uh, it's a difficult matchup for Faker to make work on this Akali. So we'll see whether he's going to continue to struggle or whether he's going to find his moment to attack. As Clid here taking the Gromp on the bottom side as uh, Faker down to about 200, having to go into the Shroud. As uh, BDD using his uh, shields very effectively here in this lane. But Faker trading his health bar for CS mainly. Mm -hmm. The uh, minion dematerializer will help out with CSing up against that oppressive Oriana versus melee 
harass that you can do. Priority in the bot side is going to give this Rift Scuttler over to Cuz. Yep. And yeah, I mean, this top lane probably not going to find too much action. As this says, the guy who doesn't die and solo kill machine, Kana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one way to say it. He rarely dies, 10th amongst top laners. That's why his KDA is so darn good. Knock up there onto Ruler, but he's going to be fine. No Devour even needed there out of life. And uh, teleports picked up all over the place here on Gen G. Triple teleport coming out. Quadra available with the unsealed spellbook that life has available to him. So Genji are going to be able to uh, be flexible around this map. Not to mention the fact that Abyssal Voyage exists. Ooh, life not going to face check effort here. They know exactly where he is. You can see that uh, Lula not quite able to find priority. As, uh, there's the ward, goes into the brush. Is now cleared, looking for Kana. Doesn't have his ulti, but Kana's going to run all the way out. And Flash now on cooldown. Successful gank already as Rascal. Blooming burst for a fair bit of damage. Yeah, he got that enhanced root down onto him. And I think it's a, a smart flash from Kana. If you're a top laner and you're trying to learn when to flash, he's probably a good <laughs> Oh, player. this is so sneaky. As Rascal going to throw his clone away, but that is a brilliant snare. Because yeah. going to be thwarted. It was right nearby, so just waited for that one. Take a look at how he is backing when he's set up the freeze, when it's pushing into him. So he's denying... A bunch of CS away from Rascal. They're both probably going to TP up to that lane anyway, but he might be able to deny a couple of CS worth of XP, which can mean all the difference up against the Nico. Faker still taking his abuse in the mid lane after taking all that unnecessary damage over in the enemy jungle before the lane even started. So has to handle that. Yep, dealing with it for the moment. Teleport back here for PDD. And, uh, okay, effort. He's already roamed in, and BDD going to get exhausted very, very... Sorry, ignited very, very early. So down to half health before this lane even really starts. Lost chapter complete. It doesn't have a corrupting potion or anything like that. As the last time we saw Jax, it was Peanut's loss versus Clid, in fact. So Clid pretty good at jungling against Jax's, apparently. It was the same matchup too as Genji versus then, oh, yeah, true. then SKT which is quite interesting, as life might be dead. Yes, he's going to get stunned. Grey health going to be eaten here, as the flash is all they're going to get. Ruler wanders back and is asking why T1 are slaughtering his catfish. It's because he's going to start off the Cloud Drake. That's going to be the first one that we'll see here. Yeah. Faker's not having a fun time in the lane. They're trying to get some extra work done in some other lanes due to that. And it, it, we saw the roam out of effort, which was really nicely timed on the teleport coming in from BDD. Wonder if Baker was able to call that one over, as I think everybody can just... <laughs> uh, well, okay. I mean, there are potential hops over that wall. I think they were just hiding. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 we didn't take this. Yeah. Mountain Drake going to be the second one here of the game, so Ocean or Infernal Soul. Going to be up for grabs. Is Rascal winning a little bit in farm? Pretty happy about that, but uh, Kanner is on the immovable object that is the Karma. And uh, it's the first time that he's played it so far this season, but I have a feeling he's going to be able to make it work, guys. Uh, pretty good at that particular pickup, as uh, that's a Devour needing to be used as Ruler trying to offer the damage back onto Teddy. Actually trading very nicely, opted in for the Sheen. And uh, they trade back exceptionally well. Life's timing on the Devour, really, really strong. Yeah, waited for the exact right moment rather than wait until afterwards for when the grand entrance could come in. So it's definitely a nice little trade there. Ruler able to get slightly ahead with this itemization. This top lane, I don't think we really need to look at it too much. I, I no. think that Nico will have, of course, the pushing advantage as well. This is uh, going to look a little bit silly. Yeah. May as well press your R button, though. Sometimes it's just what you want. No summoner spells invested. And uh, Ruler didn't actually have to flash or anything like that, so maybe mistimed an arcane shift cooldown or something like that. Perplexing is uh, Snare going to miss here from Rascal. And uh, yeah, everything going to miss from Kana as well. So no harm, no foul. Clid just going to poke out the eye of good old Shelly here as BDD. Set up in good position to make sure that Gen.G should be able to take down Shelly. But I'm, I'm already proud of T1. They, they took the first Drake. 
And they haven't yeah. been doing very wow. much of that. <laughs> that's uh, that's good, I suppose. BDD most gold in the game. He's just CSing the best here to pretty much no pressure outside of that time that the gank did come in from effort. Yep, he's the one that's been putting on a lot of the pressure, actually, as you uh, pointed out earlier. He also got that plate in the mid lane, so that's why he is ahead of Teddy, even though they are on similar farm. Also, a plate going down to Rascal here in the early game. Yep, so a uh, plate apiece in the top and mid lane. And Genji actually looking really comfortable uh, here so far. T1, a little bit more onus on them to make things happen in the mid game, given their composition that they've put together. And uh, you might see Jax and think late game, but it's jungle Jax, so not going to be getting quite as much money. Yeah, maybe like late, late, late yeah, game. Yeah, epic, <laughs> uber late game. <laughs> when uh, Nico and Oriana and Ezreal are also all full build. Yeah. So they're going to have a little bit less effectiveness there for sure. But if they can get, they, they have decent wombo combo with the Rakan. If they can get in there and then maybe counter strike into the back line or something like that with Jax's mobility. If they get the perfect team fight to be put together. But I do still feel like Genji has more tools as long as they can kind of just, you know, float through this early and mid game without too much pressure. Yep. Rascal going to ruin a couple of his CS here, but. Looks like uh, Kana starting to take control up here. Especially given the fact that his advance is already completed. Great news for the top laner of T1. So, 1,000 gold separates the two teams. No first blood just yet. We are in uh, yeah. <laughs> the LCK, guys. Yeah. It's, uh, it's how we do. We can't kill. Can't, can't help it. Literally. Yeah. It's just the way it goes. Clid looking to try and deny what we we're talking about. Maybe a slight conversation about mm -hmm. vanilla ice cream, which could have helped us get a little bit more action. Yeah. This this Akali pick is very interesting from Faker. I mean, it's Faker. We know he can play pretty much anything, right? But is it worth it when you know you're going to be zoned out of a lot of CS? And we've seen that unless you get like a decent lead or you're not really going to be dominating people in the later stages of the game. Obviously, he has a lot of assassination potential against the less mobile units oh. like BDD and Rascal, but I love this out of Genji as well, trying to accelerate uh, BDD as much as possible. He grabs yet another play. Only one left in this turret, and we're still sitting at 11 minutes in. So Kuz is going to have to flash out of the shockwave. And when BDD's on form like this, it is so scary. But he's been handed a lane. And I, I was talking, like, when you were talking about the Akali pick, I'm sort of sitting here thinking, and a lot of our Orianas haven't worked because they haven't had lane priority. But this one does because T1 sort of picked into it, right? Yeah. And so now you've got mid lane that's going all the way over to Gen G with our good friend player of the game, BDD, here. And... It feels like it was conceded by T1 because, of course, you know, like Faker could have picked something that could punish uh, in lane a little bit better, but decides to uh, pick for their sort of pile in comp to go bash bros alongside a Jax. But that uh, means that Gen G move on over. They're able to take down this Mountain Drake, put in position. Faker still dealing with this minion wave here as BDD will show up eventually. And it's Infernal Soul here this game. That would actually be a pretty decent insurance policy. Uh, for T1, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, thinking about the T1 draft, because, again, there's not too much going on in this game. Uh, Faker's played three games of Karma, even, and that's something we talk about with Karma. Like, that's easily flexible. Maybe you just throw a Faker on it and pick up something that can be blinded into the top lane, like a Jace, or... There were, there were some other options that were available. They could have gone down that route, but instead, they decided to go with the Akali as... Coach Kim says, I'm aware that many fans say our style is boring, but that's all we can do with our current form. We are not the best team right now. It's hard, but we have to admit it and try to change. Well, is this the admitting it part, or is this the changing part? Yeah, and, I don't uh, know. <laughs> With their comp, they're going to need to start the changing part. Like, like now. What, maybe they got four minutes. Something like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. so we're going to need to see a fight for that Infernal Drake. They give that one up. I think that Gen.G just happily scale until the late game that they're just going to win organically, right? 
Uh, Ezreal's going to offer a lot more than what Teddy's going to be able to do. He should get zoned out by the Orianna, Nico, and the Volley Bear. And Rule is going to have that all of that extra protection that uh, Tom Kench is going to offer him. And the, you know, Death Stance build that is extraordinarily frustrating to deal with. Yeah. I mean, there's still potential in this mid-game to make some crazy plays for T1. Uh, Faker has picked up his Gunblade. He has closed the gap a little bit. He's only about 17 CS behind BDD now, so he's been able to scoop up some more of the CS now that he has some items. Uh, okay. Effort going to use his Spellbook Heal. Got his flashback. Yeah. So, collects that one for himself. That's now available. Is Rascal just happily throwing out as many of these as possible. Effort down to about half health, even through that heal. But Teddy should be able to uh, zone Rascal away from this minion wave. As uh, Did he just break his stopwatch? Yeah, he did. Life just felt like he didn't need that one. Yeah. Odd. To say the least, is our uh, effort gonna battle dance over to Cuz? And T1 will take the first turret of the game, so that's good news. Uh, looks like BDD is gonna answer very, very quickly. Local gold collected. As okay, Lid's gonna find Kana. Oh, dives on top of him. The Abyssal Voyage comes out. Kana gonna get flashed on. There's the shockwave out of BDD. Life looking to lick him, and he's gonna do so. And there's first blood um. at 15 minutes. <laughs> Going over to BDD. <laughs> They're like at the inhibitor turret at 15 yeah. minutes, just diving on in. And you can see that T1 are desperately trying to set up the same thing, but the Nico Rascal doesn't get as much out of position. And even then, I mean, they're, they, you know, the, the tier two up in the top side isn't really as valuable. And you can see that the, um, the Rift Herald as well, the, the Shirley does go down, as I'm trying to interpret this. <laughs> Uh, I think that's first blood. Latest first blood in LCK Summer, I guess, is this game. And the the last oh, one know. was Afrika versus KT. So, yeah, the old Breaking 15 records. minutes first blood. That's the record that we wanted to break here today, 100%. Yeah. And, uh, Clint just really happy to have a bit of a hula dance. Yeah. I like how Kana was immediately just backing and respecting Clint's maneuvering. Like, sometimes when you're that safe, in your own jungle, you're like, oh, there's no way I'm gonna go down here. But kind of factoring everything in, knowing that life could get on top of him with the Abyssal Voyage, and sees the Volibear Bear running straight at him. He's like, well, I should probably just run away as much as possible, even flashes to try to get away, but it was all for naught, as he did go down. Yep, BDD does put his teleport on cooldown. Rascal will still have his. As Teddy is sort of running away with the farm on his side of the map, this is what Teddy does in the mid game. And uh, we've seen it time and time again, 16 and a half minutes in, and he's sitting at 185 farms. So, yeah, well and truly up there. The 11 or 12 CS per minute, something like that. There's Kana, he's gonna take a Grump. And uh, we've got a little bit of a back. So is it Runan's Hurricane time? Not quite for Teddy, but getting very, very close to that two item spike. Ruler does have his. As Clit's going to be boosted towards the Infernal Drake that's going to be up in 13 seconds. And T1, they're milling about. They do have some vision around the area. Mm. But uh, you best believe we're, we're expecting T1 to fight for this if they want their composition to be able to get things done. So Genji going to start this one up. Infernal is so good for, oh, yeah. for Jax, Akali, Akali especially. That uh, kind of double scaling. Kali doing a lot of auto attacks and stuff like that. It can be very valuable for the side of T1. Obviously, for Gen G, they have a nice amount of damage in their comp as well. Faker looking for an angle. Doesn't yeah, quite find it. Sky Strike comes down, down here for Clid. Gets himself a little bit of a shield. As Gen G continues sweeping up vision here, this control ward in the back of the pit doing work as Faker in flanking position. Rascal. Just being a little bit sneaky. And BDD, watch the orb, pulls it back to himself. Is okay, this is all oh, going to reset the Drake. As Clid won't have his ultimate, Faker was looking to come in and go aggressive. And the dragon is not going to fully reset just yet. Blooming Burst comes in, orb gonna be thrown over. There's the shockwave, lands only onto Kuz. As Teddy pulls Effort back, he dives on in. The Infernal goes over to Gen G. As Effort goes golden, Rascal just zoning with the Pop Blossom. 
and Genji just want to get out, but are they going to be able to as Baker dives on in, gets out again, Clint's going to fall, as now Teddy's going to hop mad into the back line. A double kill already. Life should be going down next, but he's going to flash. BDD oh. also extraordinarily low as the dissonance. Doing a bunch of work, Cuz maybe going a little bit too aggressive, but no, he's going to be rewarded for now as Kana finds yet another kill. Ruler desperately trying to do what he can, but the Shuriken backflip not going to connect from Faker. And uh, that is a great team fight for T1 despite losing out on the Infernal Drake. Yeah, the whole beginning of that looked a little bit shaky. You could see that Gen G were fantastically holding a Phalanx and a Concave there around the Infernal Drake, and we thought maybe they were just going to get away. <laughs> that was close. Okay, Cuz paying attention. He's not shopping. There's no wards there either, so that was just a good read. As we'll take a look here, Gen G, they stick around. They're getting flanked a little bit by Faker, who does get into the back line, and it makes the Soriana's life really difficult. So PDD immediately not getting much value. The Pop Blossom kind of misses everyone. And then immediately, they're like, okay, a lot of ults are down. We can begin to just run at them. And Teddy, he immediately takes that opportunity and says, well, thank you very much. Here I go, and hops over like a bunny into the enemy team, just leading the charge and gets so much value. After this, it's all about just clean up. And you can see that BD and Ruler are thinking about it, but they get baited into some more. And Faker, maybe if he hit that shuriken, he could have gone for the kill onto Ruler, but Ruler with his Iceborne Gauntlet, not going to be an easy kill. At the end of the day, yes, the Infernal does go the way of Gen G, but that was the step forward that T1 needed here in the mid game if they want to have some kind of effect in these fights before Gen.G begin to scale out of control. And maybe from here they can begin to take some of the Infernal Drake fights, especially now with Faker 1 and 0, and Teddy, more importantly, 2 0 and 1. Yeah, Teddy now has his uh, Runon's Hurricane as well, looking for a QSS for his next item, so he's going to be even more difficult to lock down. Ruler's going to get his transformation relatively soon, though. In two and a half minutes, should be enough time to get there. Because it looks like he's got a couple of long swords. We'll see exactly what that build is going to be about. We'll see whether Gen.G are going to be able to get some Grievous Wounds outside of just the Merlinomicon that BDD has completed for himself as well. Because actually, this composition has a hell of a lot of healing. Because you look at Karma, she's got an Athene's, and that deserves respect. T1 with a slight gold advantage. Genji with two very good drakes so far. So right now, stats-wise, feels like Genji are probably still just a little bit ahead. But T1 hitting their stride when it comes to their comp, especially with where Teddy is. So we'll see whether this is going to mean that, uh, like you say, T1 can bully Genji away from the Infernal Drake. A long way away from Souls for both teams, though, so that certainly bodes well for the team that does want to scale more, and that feels like it's Gen G this game. Although, I feel like Karma can turn every composition into a scaling comp these days. Yeah, I mean, if you keep Jax and Akali alive for long enough, and Kalista, actually, they do have really great sustained damage, and in a, in a very messy fight where you're in the back line, I mean, everybody has back line access, essentially, including the over Khan, so... Uh, you got Karma and Kalista kind of holding hands behind the other three that are going to dive in. They do have some potential, so that is to be worried about. You do see the QSS early here for Teddy. It's a, a pretty de defensive build. Obviously, he doesn't want to get rooted up or stunned up by the Nico or the Volibear. But other than that, it's pretty defensive overall. He knows that now that he's ahead, he needs to stay alive to do actual effective damage. Uh, we see sometimes in solo queue people just want to build up more and more damage when actually it's better to just go effect or defensive rather. Yeah. To make sure that you're staying alive and it's harder, even harder, for the enemy to kill you with that nice level lead that you do eventually get when you are fed. And uh, I think we're just going to have another fight here over the Infernal. It's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out. Yep, teleport is going to come in, so 15 seconds to go and Gen G will. Find themselves grouped up after a teleport from Rascal, who goes back home. Collects uh, the next little bit of his build. We'll see what actually he got to put together before this one. Shapesplitter comes through. Rascal just going to chase after Faker there. 
is Cuz standing on top of his own control ward. Genji trying to be in position. Is Epic going to get snared? But not going to get punished too much. Genji will be able to grab a Rift Scuttler. For that added vision. And now this Drake is going to get started again. T1 a little bit late on this. As Rascal looking to control them. There's the Fates call from Teddy, but it's not exactly what they want as Faker diving into the pit. Clid gonna be in position as there goes Effort. Gets a great knock up as it is gonna be Clid that locks down another Drake. Golden goes most of Gen G. The health bars are so damn low as Faker wants to try and tidy it up, but he can't quite get there. And Teddy was eliminated way too oh. early. Oh. In goes Cuz though, and BDD is going to fall. And Cuz is kept alive for so damn long. Teleport from the Ezreal, he will have full health as Clit is gobbled up and uh -oh. life will keep him alive. Faker <laughs> trying to go aggressive, but in the meantime, Ruler finds the back line. Kana not going to find that slow as now Faker's dealt with a double kill for Ruler and Genji fight back. Nicely done by Genji to get in there. I really want to highlight Clit that amongst all the craziness in the team fight, he's able to win the smite fight and every single Infernal that goes their way is going to be so massive for their team, especially when they can deny it away from T1. Ruler able to stay alive, returns to the fight with TP, and now he's four and zero on the Ezreal, which is just insane. And this one gets messy really fast. This is what I was talking about. The T1 comp, it's always oh, gonna hit your back BDD. line. BDD. I was watching the Drake that entire time, but BDD wearing his own orb, flash shockwaves, and gets four people. He, he's basically saved his team there because it could have been a lot worse. You know? oh, there was 100%. so much backline access. T1 was coming from three different angles, and then BDD was like, nah, -uh. I'm going to try to deny you of that. And then T1, I, I think maybe they didn't even notice that ruler had left, and then they're trying desperately to help Faker, but everybody's too low that it's like, well, you can't really do much for you. So he eventually goes down to give a double kill. To Ruler, who, by the way, completed Death Stance now and is basically unkillable with the Iceborne Gauntlet on top of it. I don't know what they're going to do to get this Ezreal. They have a lot of backline access, but it's 4-0 and zero Ezreal with Tom Kench and a big Orianna shield because he went Seraph's Embrace. So yeah, if they're going to get slowed, it's Ruler just chasing him down. Three members of T1 running away from good old Ruler right now. And that's a worrying sign, if ever I've seen one. However, the rest of Genji was in the area, so you can understand why some added respect was given. Teleport into the mid lane just to stop Genji from freely being able to take this Baron. Unfortunately, T1 not able to move this mini wave towards the outer turret. And that map control that Genji have had for what feels like this whole game is going to continue, at least until this mid outer is going to be taken. So only one turret in the lead here for Gen G, but you can see how important that particular one is. The Shape Splitter once again providing vision to Gen G, who make it very dark around the Baron. Now look to continue. Effort. It's gonna have to be really careful. This is this is getting real dicey for T1. True shot barrage. Big shields. Don't worry. Can it? Has everything available with the Mantrid Inspire. Yeah, we'll have to see if they can actually get anything done now after a pretty devastating team fight. But again, there there is very many ways for T1 to try to outplay, even from behind, but it becomes increasingly difficult when there's already so much survivability on the side of Gen G. They have itemized very correctly uh, up against a kind of dive comp that T1 have. You have Zonia's here. And GLP for the Nico, you have the Seraphs for the extra shield for the Orianna, obviously Death Stance, and Iceborne Gauntlet for Ezreal. Not to mention Knight's Vow on top of it. I mean, yeah. this Ezreal is taking a lot of killing before he's going to go down. I don't even know how they can do it. I mean, he's going to be able to reposition very easily. They, they don't have much hard lockdown, even though they have a lot of backline access. You know, there's like the Mini Sun from the Akali. The, the Counter-Strike can easily be dodged from the Jacks. I guess the Fates Call and the Rakan will be their best hope. But it's do or die now. I mean, we got Infernal Drake in 45 seconds. Yep. And so far, T1 have kind of just been giving the floor over to Gen G and letting them take position before the fights. And Gen G have just been like, yeah, sure. I mean, we have a nice amount of poke. We can zone you out and we'll gladly take this position from you. 
And you can see Ruler actually playing so far up, and he can with this composition, right? BDD chucks a shield on him. He's sort of like Karma Light at this point in time. Yeah. With the Orianna. Doesn't have Athenes or anything like that built up, but still able to offer a lot of support. But uh, with Devour right behind him, I mean, Ruler can step forward, Arcane shift aggressively, things like that, and try and get pressure onto the T1 members. And uh, there's the Infernal Drake spawning. So Effort going to get caught out of position here from Rascal. Level 10, unfortunately, for Effort, who's going to have to Blast Cone his way out. Clid grabs himself the Rift Scuttler. There is vision in this pit. So T1 will know what's going on because he can't get chunked before this particular fight is Teddy. That is not the real Nico, but he does have to respect that. And oh, they're going to dive on oh. forward. Cousin's going to grab it as Teddy. Going to get shockwaved again, but he's still alive. Effort not so lucky, Cuz trying to get out. He will be taken here as Clid flashes on top of him. And Genji, they may have lost the Infernal Drake, but this could be barren if they can tidy up here. Kana gonna go down. All of that support for Teddy's gonna go missing. Might find himself safer now that he is underneath that turret, but the rest of his team can't say the same. Faker and Teddy, can they save T1 from the barren push of Genji? Yeah, I mean, say what you will about the team fight, but if Cuz did not get that smite, I think the game would just be over from here because Gen Z would have won the fight and the dragon with Infernal Soul, and then eventually take Baron most likely on top of that. So they give T1 a tiny little chance, I'll say. That's what I'll give them from here because Gen Z are in really firm control of this game. Cuz and effort so low, they're barely able to get in there, jump over the wall. But there's no hope that they're going to win the team fight. I mean, it's just like we got to desperately try to get this Infernal, and that's all. Nobody's engaging. They're all split up. And see, this nice of a voyage comes in to get an extra kill on top of it just to make sure that they can get the Baron. And yeah, Thriller's just like a monster right now because we mentioned all the items and all that, but <laughs> it's uh, it's a Tom Kent Ezreal as well. It's one of the safest lanes, something that the Gen Z organization you know, back in oh yeah, Forte Day Day days with yeah. uh, with Ruler, they've been playing this comp since the beginning, basically, and uh, it is for many reasons extremely strong. Yeah, that was uh, with a very different Tom Kench, and I feel like ownership of that combo has sort of gone over to Aiming and Tucson, but they were definitely the pioneers of uh, this particular combo. Ezreal Tom Kench was their utter favorite uh, before Core JJ went and left us. So sad. Mm. But uh, look at the damage dealt. Ruler is all over this. More than double what Teddy's offered because Teddy just, he's been eliminated at the beginning of the last couple of team fights and hasn't been able to get anything done. And uh, BDD now with the Rabidon's death cap, that's going to make Teddy, sorry, Ruler even stronger. Now three items uh, on this Glacial Augment. Nico, who's going to be able to just completely control the battlefield. It's an, it's an awful experience trying to team fight as Teddy against this Genji comp with the Nico there. Because she just slows him down. That's going to slow his attack speed. Like, this does not feel great. As Ruler dashing on forward looking for Teddy. But Teddy hopping around with that martial poise. Mm -hmm. Teddy does feel like one of the only hopes left available to the side of T1. The Sakali, again, we, we questioned the pick and it's... Even if it got ahead, I wonder how much uh, efficiency it would have gotten, effectiveness in this game, how well it would have done. Uh, I'm yeah. just not sure, I mean, because Genji could have easily itemized the same way. Well, double Siege minions now, and it's, this composition is so low range, they can't do anything against the Siege. This was always going to be a problem. That's why this comp is so hard to play as the game goes on. And Genji just, they walk forward. They're like a juggernaut. It's so funny because that's what we used to call T1 as a team. It doesn't feel the same way anymore as Clid. Moving down towards the bottom side. Ruler just inside the T1 base. And it just feels like T1 don't have all that much left to try and hold on to this game. Because tagged by the W there from Ruler. But it's just so, it feels so easy for Gen G just to walk on over and take anything that they want as the Baron eventually is going to wear off. Not a bad power play in the end. It's now Rascal thrown around his super soaker. Teddy slowed down, and there's the fates call. T1 looking to try and put on the pressure as there's the devour. And life 
Not going to be too worried as Faker immediately goes golden. Pop Blossom finds no value. Oh. There's a good flank from Kuz, and this might be the team fight Teddy can look for. Ruler still extremely healthy as Teddy understands that he has to take this game into his own hands, but can't quite make it work. Kuz going to get kited there by Rascal, as it's just Kuz an effort to try and hold on to this one. Faker also getting himself back to base, and Gen.G hold themselves together and are able to take down yet another inhibitor. That was uh, a really nice engage from the side of T1. You really got to hand it to them from behind. They found a way and they finally made that Fates call with the Rakan really get some value. It forced the Devourer out really early on onto the Orianna, which isn't necessarily the, the person you want to use it on. You want to allow Ruler to continue to just rule by himself but he was still untouchable. Even besides all that, there was a big backline dive by the side of T1. And from that team fight, they're gonna try to roll into this Infernal and take it away real quick. I think they should be able to. Yep, they got some spooky guys. Oh my <laughs> god, live! Oh, that was it. I think it was with a smite from his unsealed spellbook, but the range may not have quite been enough as Faker is gonna execute Rascal. But Ruler will have an arcane shift, and that's all he's going to need to be able to take down Faker from the mid lane. Gen G just stealing that infernal soul from right under the noses of T1. And if it wasn't over already, man, that's got to do it now. Yeah, uh, that's a really big blow to the game and also their mental in this one. I mean, that that's not going to be easily taken down. Now the 7-0 and zero Ezreal has infernal soul. <laughs> On top of everything else, they're going to try to get him here. Well, there's the Fates call. Ruler says, no, nope, doesn't really want to have anything to do with that. As Teddy's going to get tagged, Effort looks for the charm. He's going to charm up Ruler just for a little while, but he decides that he wants to go aggressive after that. Remember, this is with an Infernal Soul. You can see a procking his brilliant shockwave out from BDD. Only onto a single target, but it's the only target that's capable of doing damage here in these team fights. And now, without Faker or Teddy, Genji are going to push in and probably just win this game. Yep, that should be it. We do have the Super Minion, although they're going to try to make their way in here with three members and hold the Phalanx, but we'll see yeah. what they can do. Cuz looking for the Counter-Strike, but does not get it. There's the ulti from Clit's going to shut down the turret. It's going to get deleted, and the Nexus is going to follow suit. Effort finds a grand entrance to knock up onto the bear, but immediately he's going to go down. Faker has respawned. He goes golden, oh. but now it's Ruler. <laughs> Triple kill instantly. That's the Quadra, a delayed pentakill. In the end, for good old Ruler. Actually, no, BDD managed to get the last one with the Shockwave, but still, damn good play out of the AD carry from Gen G, and they do strike back and find that coveted win over T1. Remember, it's not been since 2018 that they yeah. could do this, and now they're one game away. That was a really big game. I think it starts from the draft and some of the choices. I mean, Jungle Jax and Akali, that kind of uh, assassin-y play where you try to dive into the back line, I think that teams have kind of figured it out and have found ways to draft against it. I mean, we saw Ezreal Tom in, we saw the Ezreal at least in the first rotation. Tom Kent was is quite popular nowadays. I think that's something that T1 could have easily read and said, well, probably, Assassin comp is not gonna work, but yeah. they had some moments where we were like, hey, maybe, but then eventually Ruler just got too out of control and it wasn't wasn't gonna happen. Well, the problem was is that the, the Drake snowball really started it off, right? Like if T1 had have kept the lockdown on that area and made sure that Gen G weren't able to actually get into that comfortable position, then uh, it would have been a different story. But unfortunately, T1 just, still too slow in the early stages of the game and can't make these mid-game comps work. Like, if you're gonna only play for the late game, at least draft for it, right? Like, yeah. they just couldn't do it. And I think conceding mid lane to B to D just so comfortably uh, was a, a big mistake uh, yeah. on the side of T1. And that's not Faker's fault. That's the fact that he's playing Akali in Floriana, right? Yeah, it's like, if you need to get ahead, you probably shouldn't get something that normally always gets behind. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you have specific plans to get it very far ahead, which they tried the bot lane dive. That was kind of opportunistic. It didn't really seem like something that was really going to work against <laughs> Ezreal Tom Kench, right? I mean, a little bit frustrating the more I think about it, as Ruler is going to do nearly a thousand damage a minute in this game. That is absolutely absurd. Yeah, so close to grabbing that. It's just about 36 minutes.
is what it took Gen G to win this one, and they do have a slower moving composition. I think one of the, I don't know, I guess less uh, good performances out of Gen G was the Nico top lane. I felt like there wasn't one pop loss that was able to work unless you yeah. count it out as a uh, as zoning. It wasn't really the heroic effort from uh, that champion that we've seen. It's out like of, a uh, zone bot. Yeah, it was a zone bot. Yeah. But we'll see what happens, guys. It's T1 have an opportunity to fight back after the break. Oh, 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 oh,